Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. I want us to take a look at the first 18 verses or so and see what Paul is telling here to the church here in Corinth. He starts out, it says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. And so here, just in a very Paul-like fashion, he, he tells who he is, that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh, and then he's writing to who? He's writing to the church at Corinth. Uh, you know, they are, they are saints. They have been sanctified. Uh, they have been set, set apart, uh, you know, for God and by God. You know, and so we see that he's writing to his brothers and sisters in Christ, people he cares about, people he loves, people he cherishes. And so he goes on there in verse 3, he says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this very, you know, common greeting, uh, he's showing us something that can only be found in Christ that we need to see on a daily basis. And as he starts to get here into verse 4, he's going to start talking about some things uh, that are really important that he really wants them to know. He says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him uh, in all utterance and, and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting uh, for the revelation of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, here he says he is thankful for them. Uh, he has been, you know, he, Paul is always, he's always praying for the brethren. He's always uh, wanting the best for them, uh, you know, both physically and sp uh, spiritually. And so he is so proud to be their brother in Christ and he loves them as a brother in Christ. Uh, and he wants, uh, you know, them to, to understand, to see, you know, his genuine care for them uh, as he's going into this letter. He goes on there in verse 9 and says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and, and so, so you see here, now he's starting, to, he's starting to kind of turn a little bit. He's talking about, you know, you are in Christ. You belong to him. You belong to this faithful, faithful God that we all serve. And now he comes to verse 10, and now he's going to have his plea with them. He's going to be pleading with them. He says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this same Lord that he's talked about. They're all under. They're all in. They've all been blessed by I now plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you, but that, that you may be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So here he has kind of set the scene a little bit. He's told them, you know, that he is so thankful for them, that they're in Christ, that they're part of Christ. He's so thankful for God, that they are, they are part of him. And he confirms with them that God is faithful before he lays out his plea before them for them to be one in Christ, for them to have the same mind and the same judgment, for them there to be no divisions among them. And that's a lesson that we need uh, continually in our world today, that we are not to be, as Christians, as the church, we are not to be divided. Uh, there is to be no division. We're going to see a little more clarity in that uh, in the next few verses. For it has been declared to me uh, concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are uh, contentions among you. And so here a report has come that says there are contentions uh, that, that are happening. Uh, and we're going to see what those are starting in verse 12. It says, now I'll say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. And so here, people are starting to compare teachers. They're starting to compare, you know, this different way of living. And instead of just being Christians and following after Christ, you know, they're following after Paul or Apollos or Peter. They're following after other people. But, you know, uh, Paul is going to remind them through the Holy Spirit here. He's going to remind us of something that's so very important to Christ. It already started out and said that God is faithful. We're going to learn something else about God here uh, as we go on to verse 13. Because he says, is Christ divided. Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I have baptized in my own name. Yes, I also have baptized the household of Stephanus, but besides I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. And we could keep going, going down today in this context, but I, I want us to see a point. Here he starts out 
uh, as we started the, it, this in verse 9, he talked about the faithfulness of God, and then he talked about the unity of God as you, as you come on down to verse 13, when he says, is Christ divided? And then he says, was Paul crucified uh, for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And of course, uh, they were not. And notice how he uses himself as the example. He's not using Peter. He's not using Apollos. He uses himself, uh, you know, obviously, in the, you know, with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But he uses himself as this example, saying, you know, it wasn't Paul that was crucified. It wasn't Paul whose name you were baptized in. It was only Christ. And that's something that we need to remember today, that we are to be Christians and we are to submit to Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is God. And we need to remember that on a daily basis. So every day that we live our life, we need to recognize we're not to be following after man. Paul didn't speak with the words of man. He spoke with the words of God. He spoke with that kind of godly wisdom each and every day that he lived. And he lived the godly mindset uh, each and every day as he was living uh, and preaching uh, for God. And so that's a message for all of us today. Let us not be divided, but let's remember how faithful our God is and that our God truly is one. And let's live for that one true God each and every day.